So in this next video, what we're going to do is calculate the uh, moment generating function uh, for a uh, binomial distribution, well, for a uh, random variable which is distributed binomially NP. Okay, uh, so we have our abstract probability space, um, which is uh, distributed binomially. So we have x, uh, which is distributed binomially. So um, it's mapping it, uh, x is distributed binomially NP. And that means that it's mapping uh, this uh, distribution, this abstract probability space, onto the number 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n. Okay, and uh, we could do it directly from the definition, but it's far better, it's far better to think of the binomial distribution in terms of a sum of Bernoulli distributions. The task becomes far easier if you think of it in terms of that uh, than if you try and handle this silly sum over here that you're going to get if you uh, continue on bravely. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, think of a probability uh, space which is distributed binomially. So uh, let's take the probability space of uh, tossing a coin n times. So uh, you have in this probability space over here, you have all outcomes. So this is the probability space uh, 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 with the sample space omega, um, set of events f, and probability measure p. And this is uh, the set of all outcomes of all outcomes, all possible outcomes of flipping a coin n times. A coin n times. Uh, so you could get, uh, let's do an example, you could get heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, heads, and uh, you have need n. So in this case, n would be 9, uh, but you go on however many times. So how many, uh, how many, um, total possible outcomes are there. Well, you could get a head or a tail on the first one, then you could get a head or a tail on the second one. Uh, so all of these possibilities mean that there are two to the n uh, total outcomes, possible outcomes in this uh, sample space. Okay, and we have the random variable x is ascribing to each outcome s, it's ascribing uh, the uh, number of heads that you get, number of heads. So uh, to each outcome, it's describing a real number, which is just how many heads did you get. So count the number of heads. Uh, so in this case, we describe this four because we got four heads. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, so basically, we can view this um, uh, this uh, distribution here, this uh, random variable, as being the sum of a bunch of other random variables. We can define some other random variables, x1, uh, which is going to map each outcome onto either 0 or 1, and it's going to map it onto 0 if the uh, first flip is a tail, is a tail, and uh, it's going to map it onto 1 if the first flip is a head, is a head. Uh, similarly, you continue on and you define x2, which is going to map you onto 0 or 1, and it's going to depend on the second flip. So 0 if you get a tail on the second flip, uh, so it's going to map s uh, onto uh, 0 or 1, uh, and uh, second flip uh, is a tail, and second flip is a head. If, so if you get your second flip is a head, it's going to give you a 1, and if your second flip is a tail, it's going to give you a 0. And you go on all the way down to xn, which is going to map s onto, so you've got lots of random variables here, uh, it's going to map it onto 0 or 1, it's going to map it onto 0, if the nth flip is a tail, so the nth uh, flip is a tail, and it's going to map it onto 1 if the nth flip is a head. Okay, so that's excellent. Uh, now, uh, you can view x as being the sum of x1 plus x2 all the way down to xm. Uh, because uh, if you add up all of these random variables for each uh, for each outcome s, uh, it will add up to the total number of heads you got, because uh, for each space that you got a head, it's going to add 1 to the total sum. Uh, so, uh, when we ask for the moment generating function of x, the moment generating function of the big random variable t, uh, sorry, of the big random variable x of as a function of t, this is going to be equal to the expected value of e to the t x, and we can replace x with x1, x2, x3, xm. And I should have said right at the start of this problem what the original probability of getting a head on an individual flip was. Uh, so let's say uh, p, uh, well actually it says it here, p, little p here, equals the probability of getting a head on an individual throw. Probability of getting a head on an individual throw. 
on a single flip. Okay, uh, so now uh, need a new piece of paper. Uh, so uh, if we uh, if we uh, we are trying to calculate the uh, moment generating function of our big random variable x as a function of little t, and we know that this is the expected value of e of t x. Now. Uh, we uh, know also that uh, this big random variable x can be split into x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn. So we can split this into the expected value of e to the tx1 times the expected value of e to the tx2 all the way up to e to the txn multiplied together. Now x1 through xn are independent. The intuitive reason is that that what you get on the second flip does not affect what you get on any of the other flips and that holds for all whatever flip you want so the third flip does not affect what you get on the first or the second or the fourth or the fifth flip etc so they're all independent and their exponentiations are also independent so we can sp uh, split this up into the expected value of e to the tx1 times e to the e E, uh, the expected value of e to the tx2 and then it goes on all the way up to the expected value of e to the txn. Now um, all x1 uh, through xn are distributed Bernoulli uh, because they can take on two possible values and the chance that they will take on uh, the value 1 is p because the chance that you will get uh, a 1 is the chance that you get ahead in the first flip or the whatever, the nth flip uh, and the chance that you get ahead on an individual flip is just p. So they are all uh, Bernoulli distributed with, uh, with parameter p. So we therefore know that their expected values are q, sorry, their moment generating functions, uh, because we could just write this as the moment generating function, this is the moment generating function of x1 as a function of t, this is the moment generating function of x2 as a function of t, all the way up to the moment generating function of xn as a function of t, and we know the moment generating function of a Bernoulli distribution. It's just just equal to q plus p e to the uh, e to the t. So we're going to have that uh, n times, so q plus p e to the t, all the way up to the nth time where we have q plus p e to the t. So the bino the moment generating function of the binomial distribution turns out to be q q plus p e to the t to the power of um, n. Okay. Uh, so if x is binomially distributed, binomially distributed, binomially distributed, NP, uh, then the moment generating function, the moment generating function of this random variable x as a function of t is equal to q plus p e to the t to the power of n, okay, where q is equal to 1 minus p.